Hi guys, uh, so we're gonna t talk today about uh, Kobo Abe. Uh, I'm not gonna give you like a lot of uh, biographical information. Um, your classmate Garrett would probably, uh, he's probably gonna get into that a, a little bit more than I. So I just really want to like get into the two short stories that we read. Hopefully this will be short but concise and, and will help you uh, enrich uh, your reading as you already did it and understand some of the things that uh, about this this author right so Kobo Abe really quick he was born in Tokyo in 1924 and died in 1993 I can tell you he's one of those Japanese authors who are as you, you could already see right like he is very uh, knowledgeable about the Western tradition right uh, he is you could tell already that he's influenced by people like Poe and Kafka, right? I'm going to talk about some of those things in a second. Um, but yeah, he's a, a famous uh, 20th century uh, writer. He's mo most, mostly famous for a movie called Woman in the Dunes, uh, which is also, well, it's a novel, uh, of course, first, and then it was made into a movie. Um, and then the same director, which I uh, forget the name right now, uh, I'll tell you later, uh, the same director who did this movie did another one on, based on another book by Kobo Abe called The Face of Another, uh, which is also a fantastic movie if you can watch it. Both of them are in the Criterion Collection, so I recommend that you go, um, yeah, that you get like a Criterion Collection uh, uh, subscription. They don't pay me to say that, but they just have fantastic movies. Uh, and then another famous uh, book by him is called The Boxman, and I'm going to give you tomorrow like a... Um, uh, a link to a, a YouTube video that somebody made of like a short movie based on the Boxman. Uh, it's a little different than the novel, but, but it's pretty good. Anyway, so many things in these stories, right? The first one is called uh, Dendrocacalia, right? And it's uh, a plant, a kind of plant. Um, and it has many things going on, right? right? So the first thing that we see is the story of a guy who literally becomes uh, a plant, right? Um, it is not a matter of a dream. It is not a matter of like some kind of explained fantasy, right? Um, or the fantastic, it's just uh, what happens, right? It's just part of this universe and it's unexplained, right? Um, which we can talk later about like fantasy and uh, uh, fantastic literature and what are the rules and so on, right? How is this different from like Lord of the Rings? How is this different from um, a, any other kind of like, uh, you know, Twilight or any other kind of universe that has like fantastical elements. But um, anyway, like it, it is more, it's closer to Kafka, right? If you have read The Metamorphosis, uh, you know that is the story about a guy, Gregor Samsa, who wakes up in the morning, turned into a bug, right? Um, and he's never explained why, like it's not, the why he, this happened is not part of the story, right? In some way. So it is kind of like that, right? Um, the thing that we start seeing, however, though, here in this guy called Common, right, which is also pinpoints to this idea of the common man, as well as the common plant, right, it's part of the ending of the story, uh, the, the note he receives that seems to be like a, like a date, like he thinks it's from a, an old lover, right, it's from a K, which points to Kafka, right, K is the, the, the name of the character of um, the trial, right, or the apostles in German. Um, and then, yeah, so this happens, the plot is that, that this happens, and then the, this K uh, ends up being the director of um, a, a, a plant, uh, uh, I, for, I forgot the name of the place, but like a conserv conservation is like greenhouse for different plants, right? A museum of plants, if you will. Um, anyway, uh, so what he see, he, we see here, right, in this becoming plant, right, it's a, uni a universe, this is the main thing that I want for us to look into this, right, it is a universe where the distinction, obviously, between the, what we co will consider the different regimes of life, right, or realms of life, uh, doesn't exist, right, so like we, we look at, like right now, for example, that I'm here outside, um, we have plants, right, like so I see trees, I see shrubs, I see flowers and so on, we have animals, right, like the mosquitoes that are biting me, um, we hear the birds, like there was a squirrel uh, recently. Uh, my dog is here next to me. Um, and then humans, right? And we always, like in the traditional philosophy and conceptions of, of the universe, right? And we talk about this also with Burroughs. We see these are hierarchicals, right? Like we see these, like when Heidegger, for example, the famous French, uh, German uh, philosopher, right? Uh, talks about the distinction between um, things, uh, animals and, and humans, right? Like for him, humans have worlds, uh, animals are poor in world, they have 
poor worlds in his own vision, and things have no worlds, right? Like they are veltlos. He doesn't even get into into plants, right? So the question of the plant gets there a little bit. But but uh, Abe gets closer here to philosophers more like Deleuze and Simon Don, which is this French tradition, who sees rather uh, sorry, some mosquito trying to eat me. Um, who sees rather again like a non-distinction, a non-essential distinction of life, right? So there is. Uh, there is no real, if, if you get away from, you know, a biblical interpretation of like, the world was given, uh, the land was given to mankind to exploit it, animals were given to mankind or to man, right? To, to eat them, hunt and eat them, right? Or, or, or raise and eat them. Uh, if you get away from that hierarchical view, for them it's more like the universe and, and life in general has no hierarchy, right? Like the fact that uh, we, we speak, um, that we have language, that we have culture, doesn't mean that there are no cultures, there are no different um, interpretations and manifestations of, of um, what we will deem cultures, right, in other species, right? So that's kind of like uh, what we see in this universe, right? And I think that Abe is very precise about this when he says on plant, uh, on plant, sorry, but I'm just thinking of plant, about plants, on page uh, 60, right? Plants are the very root of logos, right? Like this is the voice of that guy, K. Uh, and again, we've discussed in our class, obviously, a lot the idea of Logos, right? Like in the beginning, there was the Logos, in the beginning, there was the Word, right? Like the divine Word, but also reason, right? Like the, the logos, logos being uh, the root of logic, right? Logic, reason, um, uh, uh, the Word itself, right? So when this guy is saying, uh, plants are the very root of Logos, right? Uh, and a very ancient one at that, in the new mythology, right? Plants are the gods. Their absolute purity, the very word banned, alas, from our everyday speech, is the high beating of their hearts, right? So it, it also, this story shows this idea of plants are being uncontaminated, right? Like they are the pure, right? Like more than once uh, that shows up, uh, live more purely, more richly. That's what this guy wants to do with uh, Common by bringing him to this um, place to live, this greenhouse, right? Um, so, so yeah, we have that part, right? Like, and then, uh, uh, it is kind of, um, the way that Abe, Abe does it that is very interesting too, is that he links it to the Western tradition, right? Like, so you, you have quotes, uh, you have the Kafka reference, right? Uh, but he also mentions besides Logos, which is a Greek word, right? It's, it's the Greek word for reason and, and, and words, right? And language. Um, he mentions also Prometheus, right? Prometheus being the, famously, right? Like the... Uh, God that steals precisely fire, which is the logos, to give it to give it to humans, right? Um, so there is also this reference going on there, um, and also Dante, right? Like the idea, like at some common, where, where does he decide to go after he discovers this uh, his situation? What kind of inform, what kind of information, what kind of knowledge can he get? He goes to the library, right? And then there is this kind of destiny, interesting thing where Ka as uh, posing as the guy in the library gives him uh, a book and what he gives him is the Divine Comedy, right? The Inferno. And, and shows him precisely that passage in the Inferno where uh, you have the suicides who precisely their punishment is to become trees, right? So again, like linking this uh, question in the tradition, the Western tradition of understanding, but linking it towards it, right? Like linking it to showing that already within that tradition, right? Even though there are resistance uh, or rather, there are even though like the, the main view is anthropocentric and is uh, uh, logocentric and phallocentric and so on as we have been talking about, there are resistances to this, right? Like there are questions, uh, crit criticisms internal or tensions within this tradition, right? Um, so that's kind of where it's happening, and of course uh, the main reference as well, besides Kafka uh, with the metamorphosis, the Verwandlung in, in, in German, right, with the changing. Uh, is of it, right? Like the, the stories, the, the, the Roman uh, Latin stories of the metamorphosis, like so, and, and he mentions it, like Nar Narcissus um, and all, all the, the other metamorphosis, uh, metamorphosis that happen um, in, uh, in the Greek, like myths and so on, right? So, but in a modernized, actualized way. So then we're gonna move on uh, to the other story, which is the life of a poet, right? Uh, which has also, a kind of uh, metamorphosis, right? Or many metamorphoses. Um, and also like Greek references, right? It, is, it, it starts beautifully. I'd want to read really quickly the first paragraph um, because it's very telling of what's happening, right? Like it says, 
uh, we're click clatter, we're click clatter. From early morning until late at night, the 39-year-old crone went on pumping the shiny, oil-blackened spinning wheel, cutting back on her already scanty sleep and toiling like a machine in human guise. Also, that twice, twice a day, she might fill her stomach-shaped oil pan with noodle-shaped oil and keep the machinery inside her from ever stopping, right? So, in the, in the tradition that we have, uh, when we hear about a woman that is day and night spinning a wheel uh, in, in, in order to weave something or so on, right? What we think of, obviously, is Penelope, right? This is uh, Odysseus' wife, who has been left uh, uh, in Itha Ithaca while Odysseus is going on his adventure, right? And she's been... Um, uh, a, there are suitors that are trying to marry her, that she's been wooed by suitors, right? And, um, and the way she's gonna fool them is she tells them, okay, okay, like it's been a long time, I, can, I, I do want to marry you or, or I, I will have to do it now that my husband is probably dead, but I need to uh, weave uh, a shroud for uh, Odysseus' father, I believe, uh, right? And then she's, of course, as, as you know, the, the, the myth, uh, she, what she weaves on during the day, she unravels at night, right? So. And it's also a figure of women's uh, stories, right? Like women's uh, uh, tales, right? So it's a figure of, it's a, it's a Western mythological figure of telling tales, right? In the figure of this woman. So that's how it starts, and it's called The Life of a Poet, right? Uh, so at the beginning also we are like, well, where is this poet, right? Uh, and then, of course, the weird thing happens where she's out of a threat, and what happens is that uh, her own self, right? Gets metamorph uh, metamorphosed into um, thread, right? So she ends up becoming a jacket, right? Um, and then the, the story takes a turn, a very interesting turn, right? Where what happens is that uh, we see as one of the main issues of the story that, and, and it says, it, it said, it, uh, it's, it's expressed really well on page 69 where it says, the problem was simply that everyone was too poor. Right? So what is happening in this situation is not only the story of a metamorphosis, but it's the story of a metamorphosis in a very poor society. Right? Uh, and what happens is that uh, the dreams and souls and desires of people are uh, freezing and becoming snow, right? precisely because of the poverty. Right? Um, and then, as you know, the story, uh, what happens, everything starts freezing. Obviously, the poor start dying first because they don't uh, have... Uh, uh, good jackets to cover, they don't have good roofs and so on, right? Uh, the rich uh, also they start, uh, they hold on for longer because they have uh, bigger pantries and so on, but at some point they also start uh, dying. Uh, there's a, port, a part where uh, uh, Abe says that the final self-destructive self burst of hysteria hits and some of them are, trying killing, are killing themselves, right? Um, so Anyway, so there's this metamorphosis, and, and the last guy, which is the son of, of this woman, right? Uh, he is the turning point when the jacket uh, takes life on itself after uh, it's beaten, right, and starts bleeding, and uh, flies and gets on him, right? And then we discover that this savior, right, like wh who's going to become the savior, uh, he's a poet. And this, that, is, that is kind of like what is interesting here that Abe starts questioning, questioning what is the role of the poet in a dying society, like this one, right? In a society dying out of poverty. Uh, for the most part, right? Um, and it, it, what happens is that he starts being able to interpret these crystals of snow, which are precisely the dreams, souls, and desires of people, right? And he starts literally doing research and analyzing them, right? Uh, and that becomes, at the end, his, um, his book of poetry, right? And at the end, he disappears with it. Uh, it's a beautiful ending, right? When it says, the last flake of snow gone, the youth's work was done. The factory whistle sounded, and all around him, crowds of people wearing jackets set off to work, smiling. Returning their greetings, he closed the last page of his poetry collection, now complete, and vanished into that page, right? So in some way, a very traditional notion of the poet, but a kind of uh, social notion of the poet, right? Like the poet uh, allows, gives, gives kind of the interpretation of the desires and souls and the particularity of the people and that gives them life and allows them to keep working right like they go to the factory again and and, and life be begins again right uh, and the poet that it has done his job right like or her job they, uh, and can disappear right uh, into the page very modernist uh, notion right uh, and something that again we can relate it to our times right now when we're living in this weird uh, uh, isolation and, and quarantine and so on like I don't know if you it, it depends your 
universes. Our universes are kind of determined by our likes, friends, acquaintances, uh, uh, obsessions, and so on, right? Like, so for example, in, in my Instagram, I get a lot of, uh, because I work theater and literature, I get a lot of um, daily, uh, like, actors and writers reading poetry, reading monologues, right? Uh, so kind of like bringing back this uh, role of literature as what heals, um, what reminds you of the essential, what reminds you of your soul, desire, and um, uh, dreams, right? Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of like what happens here in, in uh, the life of a poet, right? Um, so anyway, uh, that's pretty much it what i wanted to talk about the stories are very complex i think uh both again talk about a different kind of universe or uh world where rather like it's very interesting how um at the end or uh dendrochacalia right there's a part going back to this world thing and i haven't lost track of my thoughts yet um when the guy k is explaining to common right like about what this place is right like this um botanical garden right uh he says because common is probably thinking like this is slavery this is like uh imprisonment this is like you know this is an exception what is happening here right and and k says oh come on you were wrong pal you were not only the one to have those seizures you didn't know it but people everywhere are subject to that disease enough to make a world Right, so this idea that there's a world of people becoming like this, right? So what we see in both stories is that the world is combined or is made not only of the human as we understand it, but of a more uh, a universe that comprises the organic and the inorganic, right? A universe where words and dreams become snow, right? Uh, where people can become objects like jackets, right? Uh, where people can become plants, right? Uh, uh, and where the whole, uh, like, and as, as, that's what I said, it's very Simondonian because there's a guy called Geoff Simondon that analyzes how individualities, like life as in the, uh, not only life, but just things and living and non living things, organic and non organic things, right? How they, the individualities of this, th of, of everything, are connected to, to each other, right? So Simondon starts with crystals, right? So it starts with the idea of how crystals grow connect, develop, and so on, and how from there you start seeing a link with organic life, right? Like how organic life in its um, most essential forms starts developing and then to more complex forms, and from there to get to plants and to animals, and then from there to how the spiritual or uh, intellectual world or emotional world, world also connects and develops in forms that are similar to crystals and plants and molecules and so on, right? So it's a non... Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like a non-rigidly divided universe, a non-rigidly hierarchized um, universe, right? So that's pretty much a little bit of what Abe, I think, shows us, right? It's different from what Burroughs said, right? It still has, as I mentioned earlier, it has still these essential traits of the Western tradition, even though he was Japanese, right? And it can be linked uh, to Japanese tradition as well. I don't know Japanese tradition as well, so I won't presume to, to say too much here about it. But it's just like, for example, the sentence that uh, randomly, uh, common, uh, it just randomly comes to him on, on page 48, right? At the beginning of what is happening here, right? He says, filled with an ominous presentiment, common lowered his gaze Wretchedly conscious of a gradual tightening in his chest, destiny. And then in italics we have, destiny is something each man must rest for himself, he remembered. The maxim struck him as a peculiarly appropriate to, uh, as peculiarly appropriate to his situation. Something was bound to happen, right? So this idea that there is something beyond or outside of uh, the self that will mark the self and will like give you we give you right like the poet in um, the life of a poet uh, he, did, he did not know at the beginning that even though he was translating uh, there's mentions of how his words turn into oxygen uh, uh, to for other people right even though th that's the case he didn't know that he was going to save this city or this world right so in the same case common didn't know that he needed to end up being this common plant whose only trait makes it uncommon is that it grows in a different place Right, which is also part of the, the gufa at the end of the story, right? So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it also uh, makes you think about 
uh, not only the role of poetry and literature in our times, but also about different non-anthropocentric, non-hierarchized uh, universes, right? How we live it, and especially, you know, we, again, we're in the natural state. So there are a lot of notions of nature in these texts, and I think there are a lot of things to be reflected on uh, upon as we live through things like uh, a virus pandemic, as we live through climate change, as we live through a loosening of uh, hierarchies and divides in our own, own understanding of relations to each other. Uh, and to our ideas and to other species, other things and so on. So I hope you enjoy AVE. And yeah, I'm looking forward to our discussion tomorrow. Thank you guys. Have a good night.